So good evening, everyone. Hope you all are doing well. In today's session, I'll cover my lecture number seventy-seven, and this will be taking into consideration the guidelines from the Joint British Diabetic Society, which were released in April twenty twenty-four, uh, talking about glycemic management during enteral feeding for patients with diabetes in the hospital. And again, this is an extremely important set of guidelines for the specialty exam and the European Board exam. Every year, at least. two questions are asked from this guidelines we'll try to go through the important uh, concepts discussed in this set of guidelines and try to take up some cases to help apply these guidelines so one of the common things which they do tend to ask based on the guidelines is to uh, identify and to calculate the total feed dose which will be used uh, taking into consideration a previous stable day of variable rate insulin infusion so basically they always ask about the subcutaneous insulin regimen which will be applied to the patient based on the calculations which we look at in the step 1 step 2 and step 3 so first and foremost we should always try and establish if the patient is already on basal insulin required if the patient is already taking a basal insulin then we should aim to optimize the basal insulin requirement So first step of the question is is the patient on subcutaneous basal or premixed insulin prior to the admission or does the patient have type 1 diabetes or insulin deficiency if yes and if the patient is already on basal insulin then we should prescribe and administer the usual sub q basal insulin minus we should consider at least 20% from that dose to avoid for any hypoglycemia which can happen uh, during the hospital admission if the patient is on premixed insulin again he should be commenced ideally on a basal insulin which will help to mimic their usual basal insulin doses received from their premixed insulin regimen again minus 20% if the basal insulin requirement is totally new then it is mentioned that we should refer to the diabetes inpatient team to establish this dose on the other hand if the patient was not priorly on insulin or is not type 1 diabetic or does not have insulin deficiency then in this case scenario subcutaneous basal insulin is not required as mentioned by the guidelines now coming to the step 2 we should uh, calculate the total insulin used on a variable rate insulin infusion regimen for the duration of the feed for this we should make sure that the feed regimen is established take the total vriii dose of insulin received and reduce by 20% this will provide us with the total feed dose once we get this total feed dose then we should decide on the subcutaneous insulin regimen the patient will be getting and then divide the total feed dose accordingly now how to go about this is i means how how to decide the insulin regimen is if we know that the patient is on basal bolus then the basal insulin should already be in place and optimize how to prescribe the other insulins take into consideration the total feed dose so for the bolus for the bolus element of basal bolus or bolus only regimens the total feed dose should be split as either 4 hourly if a rapid acting analog is used a rapid acting analog means like an aspart or a lispro for that matter from the start of the feed or 6 hourly soluble quick acting insulin doses from the start of the feed here they are referring to actrapid insulin note a feed related dose should not be given within 4 hours of the feed ending for a rapid analog insulin and 6 hours of the feed ending for a soluble quick acting insulin it's i mean it's clear otherwise it can lead to hypoglycemia what if the premixed insulin is used for a patient not already on basal insulin then premix insulin in this case scenario should be given at the start and halfway through the feed so if the feed duration is for example greater than 16 hours then where two doses are required take the total feed dose divided into 50 50 uh split or where the glu blood glucose level spike after the start of the feed then in this cases we generally take a 60 40 so we give 60% at the required total daily dose at the start of the feed and then 40% at the midpoint of the feed so this is something which we should take into consideration when we are going to use the 
premixed insulin. What about isofen insulin? Isofen insulin for patients who are not already on basal insulin, administration of isofen insulin or NPH insulin at the start of the feed with a further dose likely to be required at the midpoint of the feed, where if the feed duration is more than or equal to 16 hours. Again, we prescribe a 50-50 regimen. Again, if there is a blood glucose spike happening after the start of the feed, then we do a 60-40 regimen where we give 60% of the required total feed dose at the start of the feed and 40% at the midpoint of the feed. So similar principles to the pre-mixed insulin. What about long-acting insulin if you're going to use that? Uh, for patients not already on basal insulin, then the total feed dose should be given in a single dose at the start of the feed. With all the regimens, the intravenous insulin infusion should not be discontinued for at least 30 to 60 minutes after the administration of subcutaneous dose given in association with the feed because you know the half-life is very, very small and the patient can quickly go into decay, especially a type 1 diabetic patient. So practice point which we should keep in mind is always take note of the variable rate insulin infusion rates. If there is a pattern of higher insulin rates at certain points in the feed, then this should be reflected in the prescribed insulin doses. For example, if the insulin doses are higher in the first four hours of the feed and lower in the last four hours of the feed, then the insulin doses should be proportionally bigger at the start of the feed and lower for the doses near the end of the feed. Very straightforward. Now, the principles which we talked in the first few slides, we are going to put in examples now. So take this scenario and calculate the basal bolus insulin dose for a patient who is type 1 diabetic or insulin deficient diabetic and receiving enteral feeding using the variable rate insulin infusion. So type 1 diabetic currently on BRIII and he's already getting 10 units of Levimer twice a day. Now, as we know from our first step, if the patient is already on a basal insulin, we will simply continue the basal insulin. So that comes as step one. It's clearly mentioned, continue usual Levimer. Now, the VRII requirements during the feed for this patient varied between 1.5 to 3 units per hour. So total 50 units were received during the feed. Carbohydrate content of the feed was around 184.5 grams. And the intended infusion rate of the enteral feed in ml per hour was 75. And the intended duration of the feed of hour per day was 20 hours per day. And he had a break in the feeding between 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. So that was a break of four hours. So in this case scenario, the step two will be again very straightforward. As we know from the previous slides, we have to calculate the total feed related insulin dose, which will be the dose which the patient received through the VRI minus 20%, as I mentioned in my initial slides. So it will be 50 minus 20%, which will be 40 units. Then we have to go at what kind of bolus regimen this patient will require. So supposedly, if the patient is given a rapid acting insulin like an analog, then as I mentioned, we will be giving, we need to now divide this 40 units throughout the feed period. So if it is a rapid acting insulin or like aspart or lispro and then we'll be giving eight units at the start of the feed and then four hours eight hours 12 hours and 16 hours into the feed very simple again if we are giving an soluble insulin like actropid we'll give 13 units at the start of the feed and then six and 12 hours into the feed so that will be around 39 units and for the first, for analog, as you can see, it's eight units given at the start. So that's one. And then again, given another four times. So it will be a total of 40 again. So remember this principle, which I told you in, the, uh, uh, in this particular slide, that in cases of uh, uh, feed-related dose, it should not be given within four hours of the feed, ending for a rapid analog insulin, and six hours of the feed, ending for a soluble quick acting insulin and hence it is equally spaced in this particular slide and that is how we'll calculate so commonly they give this example and then they put these uh, in the options in terms of their bolus regimen calculations so it's very very important uh, to understand this concept from this initial slides let's move on to example number two here we are calculating the premixed biphasic insulin dose for a patient who is not 
type 1 diabetic or insulin deficient but receiving enteral feeding using the variable rate insulin infusion. So type 2 diabetic patient currently on VRII and no basal insulin requirement. So no basal insulin requirement, as we know from our initial slides, step 1 is very straightforward. No regular basal insulin will be required in this patient. Now we'll look at what is step 2. Again, this patient is receiving between 1.5 to 3 units per hour, and that will be a total of 50 units received during the feed. Carbohydrate content in this example is the same as the previous. The intended infusion rate is the same, and also the intended duration of the feed is same 20 hours per day. And again, there is a feed break between 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. So what is the step two? Again, calculate the total feed-related insulin dose. That will be 50 units minus 20%. That will be 40 units. Now calculate the uh, regimens which the patient will be needing. So here they have given example of using an isophane insulin for that matter. So if you're using an isophane insulin like Insulatart NPH, what will we do? We will give around 60% at the start of the feed because usually the blood sugar spikes at the start of the feed as we saw in this particular uh, slide. And then we'll give 40% at the uh, 10 hours into the feed. So basically we're talking about uh, uh, 24 units at the start of the feed and then 16 units, 10 hours into the feed. 10 hours into the feed is halfway into the feed as the total feed is for 20 hours. Step three alternative, where if we are going to choose a mixed insulin regimen in this scenario, then if you're using an analog mixed insulin, the Novomix 30 will be giving again 24 units at the start of the feed. So again, that will be 60% and 16 units, 10 hours into the feed. So again, when we are halfway through the feed. So this is how we will calculate the bolus regimens for these patients. Extremely important for understanding how to decide the insulin regimen. Uh, based on the total feed-related insulin dose the patient is using and what to do about the optimization of the basal insulin requirement. Very important concepts from these guidelines, repeatedly asked in the exams. Another case scenario, this is a 62-year-old female known to have type 2 diabetes, admitted with stroke. Her diabetes was well managed uh, previously with Humulin M3, unit M3, which she was taking 30 units twice daily prior to admission. The team decided to insert an NG tube for the purpose of feeding. And now we are asked to see her to decide on the dose and regimen of insulin therapy. The dietitian is aiming to provide the following regimen. Enteral feed, ml per hour. Uh, carbohydrate content of the feed, uh, it's around uh, 15 gram per 100 ml. Intended infusion rate, around 100 ml per hour. And intended duration of the feed will be 16 hours per day. And they have asked, what is the estimated humulin M3 dose from the carbohydrate feed content that she should be given? Is it 18 units, 24 units, 38 units, 40 units, or 60 units? Now, this is extremely important. How to come to the, uh, how much of the dose this patient will be required? So there is a formula, again, discussed in the guidelines, extremely important, repeatedly asked in the exams. So first of all, the total carbohydrate intake from the enteral feed, we need to know. That is the total carbohydrate intake expected from the enteral feed over the entire duration of the feed. Example, it may be for 16 hours or 20 hours or 24 hours. This is calculated by the infusion rate, which will be ml per hour into the carbohydrate content, which will be the gram per 100 ml into the duration of the feeding divided by 100. So here we have the intended duration of feed, which is 16 in this example scenario. Then we have the infusion rate, which is clearly mentioned. It is 100 ml per hour. And we have the carbohydrate content, which is gram per 100 ml, which is 15 gram per 100 ml. So we have to put these three things into this formula to get the total carbohydrate intake, which the patient will be getting from the enteral feed. Next is look at what we call as the carbohydrate to insulin ratio or the CIR. This is how many grams of carbohydrate to glucose are covered by one unit of insulin. The blood glucose rise from the enteral feed is much more than will occur from normal meals. Therefore, one unit of insulin will cover less of carbohydrate load. If not usually on insulin, then the uh, if the patient is not usually on insulin, then we use a simple CIR value of 10. If the usual total daily dose of that the patient is already taking is less than 40 units, then use a value of 8. 
if usual total daily dose of insulin that the patient is taking is more than 40 units, use a value of 6. This is clearly described in the guidelines. So if patient not priorly on insulin, use a value of 10. If using less than 40 units per day, use a value of 8. If using more than 40 units per day, use a value of 6. So what was our patient using? Our patient was using 30 units twice a day, so almost 60 units per day. So we should use a CIR of 6 in our patient scenario. So let us now look at the answer to our question that how much of M3 will the patient be need to be given? So uh, this is a uh, daily now. So let's look at this, this patient. So we have the carbohydrate content of the feed, which is 15. Intended infusion rate, as I mentioned, 100. Intended duration of the feed, 16. Previously on insulin with the total daily dose around 60 units. So the CR, which we need to consider is 6. So this is how we'll calculate the total human M3 dose. So it will be carbohydrate content of the feed uh, multiplied by 100 multiplied by 16. So that's the carbohydrate content of the feed multiplied by the intended infusion rate multiplied by the duration of the feed. Divide that by 100 and divide that by the CIR. And that will be giving us 40 units. And that is the dose the patient will be needed to be given in the 24 hours. So what is the estimated humulin M3 dose for the carbohydrate feed content that she should be given? The correct answer for this patient will be 40 units. And we get that very simply by doing the total carbohydrate intake from the enteral feed and dividing that by the CIR to get the answer for the case scenario, which is commonly asked in the exams. Now, this is case number two. Here we have a 58-year-old female diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at the age of 5. She had poor control for the last 10 years, admitted with stroke, commenced enteral feeding, titrated up to the full uh, rate over 48 hours. She was given a variable rate intravenous insulin infusion for the first 72 hours of her hospital admission with hourly capillary blood glucose monitoring. Her basal insulin doses had been omitted. To continue on this case and to get access to my full lecture series, which will cover in detail the complete guidelines, please subscribe to my lecture series. Uh, currently, there are, including this lecture, 77 lectures on my lecture series. And if you get need to get the full subscription, please email me on mmazirules at gmail.com or you can simply WhatsApp me on 0097155743 Thank you so much.